What is a laneway house and why are they so popular these days? What do they look like inside and what do they cost to build? And why you should consider building one yourself. Today we'll be taking you on a tour of a laneway home in Banff Trail, Calgary. It's 886 square feet, two bedrooms, one bathroom. And laneway homes can also be called carriage suites, backyard suites, or garden suites. And the official name that the city of Calgary calls them is backyard suites. Now, one thing you want to pay attention to and make sure of is that your property has the right zoning for it because the city of Calgary will not just let anyone build a carriage suite on their lot. So with that being said, they're typically built above a garage facing a back lane. Yeah, and sometimes even if you're not zoned uh, for a carriage uh, or sorry, a laneway house, uh, you can actually ask the city to see if they would uh, be able to rezone it. So it is possible. Um, so there's laneway houses in Calgary are gaining so much in popularity for their utility. And it's really for two main reasons. The first is uh, it's popular for those who want to have extended family or immediate family living with them, but also just want that separate separate space, as well as uh, rental income, right? So laneway houses are good for, well, pretty much anyone and everyone. The first would be multi-generational families. Uh, so people that, you know, again, want to live close to each other, but still have that separate space. Uh, if you wanted that extra income, so, uh, you know, it's great for seniors or to help supplement your retirement. Um, it's also good for those who want to add value to the property. So there's, you know, lots of uh, different reasons why laneway houses are so popular. The best part is being able to take advantage of a property that you already have or be mindful of the property that you buy in order to add value to it by building a laneway home like this. Now, just before we show you this property, we want to give you a little bit of context. Our client built this laneway home in order to rent it out. So they were really mindful of a few things. One was to actually uh, maximize the square footage and usability so that they could maximize rental income. The second thing was um, they didn't overbuild it, meaning they didn't use any high-end custom finishes um, so that they could be mindful of the budget that they have for it and still have it look really great inside. So while we take you on this tour of this laneway home, uh, we're also gonna go over things like how much it is to build one of these, uh, what the homeowner would have done differently now that he's had it for a few years, and uh, how much you would cash flow if you were to build one. So let's go. So we are starting this tour by going up the stairs and there's a, several different ways you can set up the stairs. It goes above the garage uh, leading to the laneway home. So right now we have a lawn staircase. You can also set it up so you have a land to, to split it up. Um, another thing you could also do is add an elevator. So now I'm just going to pass it to, to Felix and we're going to show you the kitchen. All right, guys. So the one thing about this kitchen is you can't even tell that it's for a smaller home. It's pretty huge and it's almost the same, it's pretty much the same size as smaller detached homes. What I love about this kitchen is number one, the look, right? Everyone is looking for, you know, a bright space and having white cabinets, it's timeless. It will never feel dated no matter when you decide to sell 10, 20, 30 years down the road. I love this island. It's big enough uh, for this size. Uh, I love how you can seat two, three people here. And it also overhangs on this side as well adding another seat. Uh, so if you wanted to entertain, have people over for dinner parties, you can do that. Uh, I love the full height cabinets. Uh, and I also like how, you know, there's also, uh, you know, a window just above the, uh, the sink and there's a lazy Susan right over there. Yeah. All right. And, uh, and oh, also for, you know, the countertop, uh, guys invest in a good quality quartz because you don't want it to stain in case that there are accidents, uh, you know, spilling wine or something like that. Uh, you know, you know, you just want to make sure you clean it up after, but uh, it won't stain if you get a good quality one. Uh, now, I just want to point out a few things for investors. When choosing your colors, I'd choose neutral colors so you appeal to the most people. And the second bit of advice would just be being aware of your budget. You want stuff to look nice, but you don't want to overspend on the best materials. Um, out there because you won't get that return back because it is a rental property. Now we're going to go show you the living room. 
Now, check out this living room. It's bright and open. The vaulted ceilings carry along here, which keeps this a very nice feeling spot because of the openness. You're gonna spend a lot of time here, especially if you're watching TV or even, you know, just hanging out with your friends. The big thing is, is that this is a bigger space. It has plenty of space for a full size sectional. One thing to note too, is this owner has chosen a flat ceiling finish, which is also timeless. I'm gonna take you out to the patio here. Check out this outdoor space. Now, you can have enough space for a barbecue and some seating spaces or a seat or a table to have a nice dinner out on a nice summer day like this. Uh, one thing I really love too is this high, uh, it's quite high up, this privacy glass. So you can really keep private and it's away from the house, the main house. So that's one thing I really love about it. Now let's go check out the bedrooms. All right, so again, there's two bedrooms at this place. Uh, and I really loved what the, uh, our client did here because uh, they really maximize, just based on the architectural design, the feel and openness of uh, these rooms. So in here, the second bedroom, uh, there's a pretty big walk-in closet. Uh, you can use it a little bit for storage uh, and for you know uh, all your gear and stuff like that. Um, what I like too is the vaulted ceilings just kind of uh, continues up uh, here as well too. So it's not just your standard, you know, eight feet ceilings. Uh, of course, a big window letting in lots of light. And coming out in between the other bedroom is the full bathroom. And I like that because it gives you a little bit of separation. Um, I love how uh, it is a floating cabinet uh, in the bathroom there, as well as a tiled shower. And our client didn't put a bathtub in there for a reason because uh, for the tenant profile that uh, they wanted, uh, they didn't want to have kids, you know, there's just more, a little bit more wear and tear. Uh, and so that's why they decided to put in a uh, shower. And Jazz will show you the second bedroom here. All right, come with me. Take a look at this second bedroom. I mean, it's almost the same size as the primary bedroom, just a little bit smaller with a huge walk-in closet there and lots of uses for this, very flexible uses. Could be a den like it's being used right now and it could be a second bedroom you know typically the more people that you have the more rental income you can get if you're living it on your own it's really a flex space could be a workout room could be a lot of things and then check out this laundry room right here we got full size laundry that's stackable and uh it's just for the ease of using it it's right there for you now we're just gonna finish off with uh, helping you to understand the cost of building a laneway home like this, as well as other tips and info. Okay, so we want to go over how much it costs to build a laneway home in Calgary. So this particular laneway home that we're in right now uh, was built pre-pandemic 2019 for $200,000. And the owner did some of the landscaping and some of the electrical, and our client actually was the general contractor. Yeah. Um, and so talking about, uh, you know, the cash flow. So let's just say as an example, um, you know, you wanted to make, uh, this was $275,000 to build, uh, and you want to put 20% down, uh, 25 year amortization with at about five and a half percent, your mortgage on that is going to be $220,000. Okay. The payment on that is going to be about 1,340. Your taxes, uh, just for this portion of it, is gonna be about $165 a month. Uh, your insurance uh, is gonna be about $125, and that's really like just the replacement value of, uh, you know, say $275,000. So your total, we it would come up to about $1,630. So if you can rent it for $1,750, which is very reasonable, um, uh, and you minus your expenses, then you're left with a cash flow of $120 a month. That's not all though. You also have the mortgage pay down on a monthly basis. So in the first five years, your average principal pay down uh, per month is about $400. So your total return, uh, you know, on, on a monthly basis, uh, or what you're increasing your net worth by every month is $520. And of course, this will increase as time goes on. 
Here's a quick tip for you for laneway homes because it's typically built above a garage. On the second story, it tends to be a little bit warmer, so you might want to consider installing air conditioning. And for locations to build these laneway homes, um, you'll usually find them in the inner city uh, because they are RC2 zoning or higher density. But you also see them in the suburbs like in Mackenzie Town or Curry Barracks or even in the city of Airdrie. But those tend to be a little bit smaller one bed your bedroom units. Yeah. And another thing to note if you are looking to build a laneway home in Calgary is that you need to make sure there's a designated park install either inside or outside the garage as well as you need to make sure there's a designated outdoor area that's at least seven and a half meters squared. Some things that uh, our client would have changed knowing what he knows today uh, after having this laneway home for a few years is moving the laneway home right up to the property line with the neighbor. Uh, that way there's really no wasted space as well as adding windows that can open on the side that faces the house not just uh, the side that faces the, the back lane, uh, just for a better airflow. And make sure if you have an illegal secondary suite that you legalize it by December 31st, 2023, because the city of Calgary amnesty period is ending at that point. And if you are an investor or you wanna learn more about laneway homes or how to pick the right investment property, check out our investor playlist. We're gonna leave it here as well as the link in the description below. My name is Jasmine Lai. I'm Zach Schultz. And I'm Felix Chan, Realtors with the Live Interstate Real Estate team, helping you keep real estate simple. And we'll see you in a few seconds.